All right, let's just refocus for a second. Okay, now we need to look at what this poem, the yellow poem, this ballad, what is the story or the set of images that are being presented to us and what's, the, what's actually going on here. Um, so let's, let's take a look. The first stanza, I watched a funeral pass, all the women waving lilac stems around a coffin made of glass and the face of the man who lay within, who had breathed a poison gas. You, I hope you can already, if you just read out the poem, you already get this rhythm, this repetition, the rhyme. But basically what's happened is, um, some man has died from breathing, breathing poison gas, um, and women next to him are waving lilac. So we already get the juxtaposition of flowers and poison, in the first stanza. Um, in the second stanza, um, we hear a call to prayer in a golden mosque. So we see the mosque. And you know what, I'm gonna use a pen for this. So we see the mosque. And next to the mosque, we have blood on the walls. Muzin is the person that is calls to prayer. Um, if you know anything about the uh, Muslim religion, Islam, uh, in mosques, there is someone who calls everyone to the prayer. Um, his eyes are obviously wild with despair, um, possibly or probably because there's blood all over the walls of a religious house. Um, next, we meet two blind beggars. And the person speaking, oh, we should note this in our list of things, it is uh, the first person. Even though um, he watches, it seems, he doesn't involve himself. He's not involved in the action. Um, I press my, well, he, actually here, he is a little bit involved in the action, so I'm going to cross that out. Um, uh, I press my hands with a hundred black dinars, dinars is money, and their salutes were those of the imperial guards in the mother of all wars. Uh, the mother of all wars we'll come back to with the context of the poem. But the thing here is we get beggars who are also soldiers or were soldiers, something's changed here. Um, the Tigris is what's supposed to give you the geographical clue. I mean, as I made my way down Palestine Street, a lot of students think this is a poem about uh, Palestine in some way. Um, however, uh, actually the Tigris is in Baghdad, in Iraq. Um, and if you knew, you, if you, for your geography students, that would be the tip-off. But um, if you didn't know already, the Palestine Street was in Iraq. So, smelling the river, uh, and the smells in the air, but still on his head, there's this barbarian sun, which I think is, again, it's, look, it's really hot. That's fine. But it knows no armistice. Armistice is the point when people agree not to fight anymore. Oh, there's a lot of sunshine coming up in my room right now. I'm just going to close this. Um, uh, armistice is the point of kind of surrender. And it's strange that the natural imagery here is one of a river that's really, you know, lifts the air. It's almost, I'm just going to put lifts. And the sun that's going to war. The sun itself is barbarian and going to war. Um, as I made my way down Palestine Street, I saw a cruise missile. I mean, that's, that's, a, major, that's a major weapon that's just... Walk, you know, moving around the street in a slow and silver caravan on its slow and silver mile. And next to it is a beggar who turned up his face and blessed it with a smile. 
Um, so we have a beggar, and somehow the beggar's blessing it. Blessing what? Blessing a missile? That would seem strange. But how does he bless it? Like a, uh, like a priest would with a cross? No, he blesses it with a smile. So this, this smiling beggar, it, that's kind of innocent. And this weapon is, is, is kind of brutal for me. So here we, we get lilac poison, mosque blood, beggars and soldiers, uh, the river and the sun, a weapon and a beggar. And what we can notice in the poem, before we come to its conclusion, is that this is a place that's been really brutalized by war. Um, this is indeed Baghdad, where America and the UK invaded in 2003. But the context of this poem is actually 1998, where both the US and the UK were, all, were still, um, this was in the wake of the first Gulf War, called by George Bush Sr., I believe, ironically, the mother of all wars. 98 was a long time after the mother of all wars, but there were still sanctions on the country of Iraq, and the US and the UK would periodically um, bomb the country as well. And the poet here, uh, Robert Minahick, was it was his experience of being in Baghdad and witnessing the poverty and the devastation. And we can all also say maybe the, okay, so I'm going to put these things, brutality, um, uh, the mixture of innocent traditional images and uh, um, signs of modern warfare, you know, out of work soldiers, uh, bloodied mosques, po uh, people dying of poison gas. Uh, no peace, even from the sun, and cruise missiles still floating around. Also, we have uh, poverty. There's beggars all over this poem. And there's a sense that things aren't what they used to be, that things, there's something, there's something really wrong. Um, and we, we are watching the victims. We're getting a ballad, a song almost, uh, that lists the images of the victims of this war. But then something changes in the last stanza, and it's worth looking at um, carefully. As I made my way down Palestine Street, under the yellow palms, I saw their branches hung with yellow dates, all sweeter than salams. Salams is a kind of hello. And when that same child, that beggar child, reached up to touch, the fruit fell in his arms. Now, the speaker of the poem did give uh, some beggars earlier on in the poem some money, and he put that money in their hands. And there, there does seem to be a kind of parallel here. But here is something a little bit different. The yellow palm, um, what I think of when I see it, when it's a, it's a natural image, again, um, it, it provides shade, it provides food, uh, it, it, it's, it's sweet, it's a person almost, because it can say hello, or it's, it's, uh, it's yellow dates are sweeter than hellos, um, and it's, it's giving, it's generous. And this poem doesn't say that there's still hope here, but this final image, especially as this fruit effortlessly falls in the arms of a beggar, is a moment of hope for this child, um, for us. And he's already smiling. You know, he smiled at a cruise missile. He seems quite innocent. Um, and there is some sense that he'll continue to live. And there doesn't seem to be that same juxtaposition here. Um, here in the end, there is just the possibility that something will be okay. Uh, this might be undercut by the previous stanza, where in this same, um, where this same 
beggar was also blessing a uh, cruise missile, uh, indeed, with his smile. But I think that there's a lot of room to continually interpret this poem. But the basic reading, the basic thing provided in this poem is a series of images uh, in the form of a ballad that juxtapose good things and negative things and presenting almost a sense of hopelessness in Baghdad. And the last stanza uh, gives us that sense of hope, particularly by a natural image surrendering its fruit to a beggar child. So what is the symbol of the yellow palm? Perhaps it is of hope of food, it's natural, it's innocent, um, and all the other things that we discussed up here, perhaps. But that's for you to decide, ultimately.